Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the law. This is your legal light. It is your health law. And this is where we help you to appreciate the laws of Ghana, and in fact, the laws that you ought to know globally, not only of Ghana. And this afternoon, we'll be dealing with a very important subject matter, and it has to do with the subject of data. We live in a world where we now live virtually. We do almost literally everything virtually on the cyber world. And we are interacting with data. That's what we do. Ghana passed a Data Protection Act, a law, in 2012 to make sure that you are protected when your data is being dealt with. Your data is circulated among many places. You go to passport office, you go to the National Identification Authority, you go to the births and deaths, almost everywhere. You go and do or transact some business, your data is left there somewhat. At the hospital, how must this be treated in the way that protects your interests at all times. That's why this afternoon we have none other than the head, the executive director and commissioner of the Data Protection um, Authority or Commission to help you to appreciate the law. We'll take a quick break We'll be right back. I'll take you through the Constitution so that we do a little exercise before we zoom into the discussion proper. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini, your host. This is the law. It is your legal light. It is your health law. You're welcome back, and this is the law. It is your legal light. It is your health law. Let's first go to the 1992 Constitution, which is the supreme law of the country, and Article 18. Article 18 one says, Every person has a right to own property either alone or in association with others. That's not what is important to us for this afternoon. But 18.2 says, No person shall be subjected to interference with the privacy of his home, property, correspondence, or communication. This is very important for our discussion this afternoon. No person shall be subjected to interference with the privacy of his home or her home, property, correspondence, or communication, except in accordance with law and as may be necessary in a free and democratic society for public safety or the economic well-being of the country, for the protection of health or morals, for the prevention of disorder or crime, or for the protection of the rights or freedoms of others. So the laws of Ghana begin with the Constitution, which is the mother of all laws. It says, no person or individual, starting from the president to the man on the street, sweeper, has the right to interfere with your privacy. No one has that right to interfere with your privacy. The things you do in private, that makes you a human being. So, your correspondence, your communication, nobody has a right to tap and be listening to you whilst you are talking and having conversations with other people. No person has that right. They cannot do that. The only exception allowed by law in which the privacy 
of your home, your property, correspondence or communication may be interfered with will have to be, and even so, has to be done in accordance with law. But the circumstances that provide the exception, the law says, public safety, if we must interfere with your privacy for public safety, for the economic well-being of this country, for the protection of the health or morals of this country, or for the prevention of disorder, or for the protection of the rights, uh, disorder, or crime. So if you are engaged in a private conversation, no matter how private and secretly you are doing, and which is your privacy, if what you are doing is towards the commission of a crime, there's no protection for you. That protection will be taken away. Then we will deal with you according to, law, to the law as a criminal suspect. So there is a body, an institution, that has been set up by Ghana, the authority given to parliament and the president or the executive is what culminated into the Data Protection Act 2012. Data Protection Act 2012, as assented to by the president on May 2012. And it began operation on the 18th of May. On, the president assented on the 10th of May, and it began operation on the 18th of May 2012. So a body was set up. And that body has been working for a while now. It is known as the Data Protection Commission. The Data Protection Commission. What are its objects? The law says the main job of the Data Protection Commission is to protect the privacy of the individual. Remember Article 18.2, that your privacy must not be interfered with, must not be compromised. The privacy of your home, your property, your correspondence, your communication. Nobody has a right to interfere with it unless under the exceptions that I read to you. So which entity will provide supervision and make sure that this protection given to us by law will actually be upheld? That is the Data Protection Commission. So the law says its job is to protect the privacy of the individual and personal data, personal data, by regulating the processing of personal information and to provide the process to obtain, hold, use, or disclose personal information. That is the Data Protection Commission. They are to protect the privacy of the individual and the personal data of the individual by regulating the processing of personal information and provide the process to obtain, hold, use, or disclose personal information. So if someone wants to obtain, hold, use, or disclose personal information, information that belongs to you, information that belongs to someone else, it's information perhaps you have given to the hospital because you have been to that hospital for care and that hospital has been responsible for taking care of you. So they are holding a folder of yours in which your health information is contained. If that information, that data has to be obtained, has to be held, has to be used or disclosed, what will be the process to disclose it, to hold it, to obtain it, or to use it? So there are means that have been provided by the law that if they are breached, if they are violated in that process, then the Data Commission, the Data Protection Commission, is the body that will come to your protection and ensure that whoever mishandled your information wrongfully disclosed your information, held your information in the wrong way, 
or wrongfully obtained your information will be subject to the needed punishment. That's what they are around to do. They are to implement and monitor compliance with this particular law that we're speaking about. So we are going to have the um, head of the institution share with us how they are ensuring that you and I, our data, personal data, is not compromised by those who have taken our data and are holding them as holders of our data uh, and data subjects. How are they protecting our interests? We'll be right back in a minute. You're welcome back. I remember where I started from with you. Article 18, you know, 2, about the protection of your privacy. Talking about your data. The Data Protection Commission set up to do so for you. The Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, Patricia Edusepoku, is right here in the studio. Good afternoon. Good and afternoon. welcome to the law. Thank you. Great. So the commission is the entity, authority, <clears throat> if you like, mandated to regulate the processing of personal data. We are interested in knowing how, you know, the commission has carried out this mandate by far, because it's important. We live in a world where we are virtually living on the virtual world, and so our data is exposed to abuse and violation. So how has the Commission carried out its mandate so far? So from the beginning of our office, I'll say 2017, when I was appointed, my predecessor had commenced the establishment of the office. Mm. And in so even though the law was made in 2012, yes, the office began its work in 2017, 2015. 2015, 2015, right. 2015, uh, credit to my predecessor who had established the office and commenced inviting uh, data controllers to come and register with the commission. Madam Falconer, so, right? Yes, Good. Techie Falconer. Mm. She had commenced the uh, invitation to data controllers to come in and register, and she had over 1,000, 1,200 uh, on the books registering and, 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 and had done a, a mini uh, enforcement action to raise awareness of the existence of the law. So that far was good and we picked up from there. And my perspective on the subject is that data protection is a new uh, initiative on the global landscape. Many data controllers were not aware of how it's impacted their business the business implications, the actions they were meant to take. So we, my management, I told me, I, I mean the management of the Data Protection Commission and the board of directors saw fit to do a lot on the raising awareness front, bringing it to the fore, uh, uh, especially converting the legal requirement into business speak okay. for the business people to understand exactly what action they were meant to take uh, to be in, com uh, in compliance with the law. Right. Our focus is not, as, as it is on the global landscape now, it's not so much on compliance, 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 but the new focus is on accountability, on data con controllers proactively wanting to do the right things so that they can explain their efforts to the people, you and I, mm. whose data they have collected to do their work. So when, when you, you, you've kept saying data controllers, who are these? So data control is a good question. Mm. Data controllers are, is anyone who on their own or jointly with anyone decide to collect and process data? You might go and ask me what is processing. Exactly. And processing is any activity on the data, which includes creating, saving, sharing, distributing, viewing, having access to, even having a login to a mm. database, uh, uh, and, and, and any activity including sharing, sending off on the I've data. That's processing. I mentioned passport office, hospitals. Yes. Where else? Who else is qualified to be labeled as data controller? So the obvious ones are the large public sector entities, such as what you just said, the uh, passport office, immigration, BEFs and DEFs. They are naturally, as part of their business, collecting our data every day. 
But in the Ghana Act under Section 90, when it states that the law binds the Republic, mm -hmm. meaning that every office that has established itself or even a club or association that exists that has one member or has one employee is collecting data All right. because you have the person's details. So some people say to our commission that oh, we, we've just uh, established, we are not collecting any data, we just exist. So far as you have yourself and one employee, you have there, it only takes one So individual. literally every business, right? literally every business is In a Ghana. data controller. That's right. Not only like lawyers and which other Schools, accountants. hospitals. Mm. The Momo man down the street. Mm -hmm. Someone mentioned in the last place I spoke, the, the mobile phone repairer that gets access to your phone every time you send it to repair. They are all data controllers under the okay. definition of mm. our Right. And so your mandate is to regulate the processing of the personal data. And I just began to read a section of your act. Mm. Um, that is um, section 17, privacy of the individual. And it says a person who processes data. No, that's not what I actually referred to earlier. I had uh, read this particular portion um, re re regarding your, your, your mandate. That's too eight. Regarding your mandate. That's correct. Regarding your mandate. And it says that you are to protect the privacy of the individual and personal data by regulating the processing of personal information and to provide the process to obtain, hold, use, or disclose information. How do you do this? So we have three spaces in which we do this. We regulate the technology we use, the people who use the technology and the processes that we use in our groups. So it's technology, people, and processes. That uh, makes uh, our scope clear for mm. you. And in addition to that, the commission has stated to the Ghanaian public that we have three T's to help you remember even right. further. Mm -hmm. Three T's by which you can hold us accountable. Beyond technology, people, and... Uh is it Processes. process? Mm. We said we made it simple by saying we have three T's mm -hmm. by which you and I can hold the commission accountable. Okay. Which is we are focused on transparency, trust for transformation. Transparency, trust for trans transformation. Transformation because okay. the Ghana digitization agenda is looking to transform the nation. That's right. Our contribution to the transformation of that. Uh, of the economy is to enable uh, transparency through the principles of data protection. So every data controller, if you aim to be transparent about what you do, mm -hmm. you follow the principles, you keep people informed, you do publish information, you make information accessible the appropriate way, and, and, uh, and then you build trust mm -hmm. between yourself and your customers. That's very essential. That's right. And then there's trust between the institutions and us, the commission, and all of that working together will lead to the transformation that we are all looking right. for. So that's the three T's that we are, so, we've been uh, promoting since 20. So in this day and age where we are doing everything, you know, just by grabbing our phone and we can buy, we can subscribe to all sorts of things, we can register and apply for passport. Mm -hmm. And that is where the country is going to through the digitalization, digitization process. Mm -hmm. We need to trust that when we give our data, our personal data, it will be protected. Those to do that for us is the Data Protection Commission. And she's saying that they are running on transparency, trust for transformation. Let's try and check them if they are actually doing that now. Okay. How does the Commission make data subjects aware of their rights? We've spoken about data controllers, those that we give our data to. Mm. We are the subjects, right? Yes. How do you make us aware that these are our rights that we can insist on? Okay, apart from doing our free drop-in sessions, which we do in the Commissions, we used to do a lot of face-to-face pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now it's webinars. Only last week I uh, signed off the webinars to be almost every morning in the commission through uh, uh, web links where you can just join and, 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 and 
uh, here, I'm a data subject, what are my rights? Right. Or I'm a data controller, what are my responsibilities? Mm -hmm. We're doing these free courses, which will soon be published on our website, and you will have links everywhere to push out to your friends and family, uh, and the web office is preparing to do that. That okay. aside, mm -hmm. what you and I are doing now exactly. is another channel, uh, me being on TV and on radio, uh, going on and on about transparency, trans, trans, uh, and transformation. Now, and remember, we have engaged uh, on this platform during, the, during COVID, yes. uh, particularly at the time when they were going around cracking the whip on the data controllers who were not complying with what they needed to do. We'll talk about that soon. So the data subjects who are watching and listening to us now, including myself, of course, yourself, oh. What are our basic rights that we need to know? I have first read Article 18, Clause 2 to them, that to, to, to everybody, that mm -hmm. your, the privacy of your home, your property, your mm -hmm. correspondence, your communication mm -hmm. is not supposed to be interfered with. Exactly. What are the rights? The, the very first right that you have is the right to be informed okay. at the point of collection. At the point where a form is shoved in front of you, sign here, mm -hmm. press here, especially when you're in hospital or at a school or you're about to uh, on board, to get onboarded to any service, especially in the public sector, you can ask to be informed right. properly about who, what, where, how, when of the data, meaning that who will get access to the data? Mm -hmm. How long are they keeping the data? Why are they collecting so much data beyond your name and your, your address? Every single attribute in what we call the data set, which is all the information that you usually put on the form, should be justified. You have a right to ask to know yes. why this set of data is being taken from you, yes. uh, who is taking it, how long it's, being, it's going to be kept, who, have who it to might you. be disclosed to. Yes, all okay. the details about the, the information that is being collected you have the right to be informed about it so that you, the individual, can de begin to make a decision as to whether you are happy about it or okay. not, or you object, and then your other rights come into play following that right to be informed. All right. Please, I'm sure you're paying particular attention mm. because these are your basic rights and you need to know them. We know that the data uh, controllers will also have some rights. But we'll get to the, the, their rights first. And you are interested because you are a data controller. Almost all of you yeah, watching duties. and listening now, <laughs> somehow you are in some office, you are working, you are controlling data. So beyond this first basic rights that you speak about, what are the other rights that data subjects must know are our rights that we must guard? So data uh, subjects, mm -hmm. rights to be informed, Right to object, right to erasure, right to participate in how the data is used, meaning that if the, even after you've consented, you can also have the additional right to uh, uh, give further authority for when institutions want to do other things with the data beyond the original purpose. You have the right to... Uh, um, <laughs> so many rights. I don't said right to erasure. Erasure. I've sir. given you my information mm -hmm. and I want it erased. Is that what you mean? That's right. And I can have a right to erase, That's have it right. erased. You want, you, if you want your right to uh, the data to be cleared from a system, you can ask for that to happen. Did you hear that? That's really interesting. Yeah. Really interesting. We'll get to uh, some more details uh, about... You can ask for amendment. Okay. Right to rectification or mm -hmm. amendment of the data, especially if your name is spelled wrong, for example, you, you have a right to demand it to be corrected. Great. Now, um, the data controllers, do they have any rights? They have duties. Duties, not rights. Yes. Okay. What are some of their duties? So, of course, data controllers also are data subjects when exactly. they go to use services. Mm -hmm. But if you collect the data, you have duties under the law. Mm -hmm. The duty is for you to uh, uh, explain the legitimate grounds. Mm -hmm. So some data controllers, such as the public sectors, have some legal backing to collect data. But they need to, yeah. in, in uh, addressing the right to be informed, explain what the law says they should be doing. That's a duty for them. Right. They have the duty to also uh, ensure they have consent before they, they process the data. 
when they want to repurpose the data, meaning that you've collected for one purpose, but now you want to use it for something else, you need to go back to the data subject and get uh, further consent. Mm -hmm. Or if, the, if you think it's, it's a difficult uh, thing for you to consult your data subject, if you have millions or thousands, you can approach the commission for clearance. And we are working with our peer regulators in the, because about 74 regulators are demanding data protection now as an eligibility criteria for, for the people they serve. For example, the Bank of Ghana is insisting that banks come to us to get clearance for projects that they want to do, new projects, or when they are onboarding them. So many regulators are doing this and sending data controllers back to us for clearance on behalf of you, the Ghanaian public. So, so, we so what do you do? You give them a certain certification? Yes, yeah, so we give them a letter to go back to, the, to their main regulator to uh, progress with what they want to do or, or to stop it. And that is, uh, we checking on your behalf that they have done the necessary risk assessment, mm -hmm. identified the risks in the project, mitigated the risks to our, our, our satisfaction, mm -hmm. and we stand in your stead to make sure that they are uh, being uh, conscious, they have the, the that we are the conscience of their uh, their project to That's make right. sure that they are thinking through what your rights are, that the impact on the individual, uh, the risks to harm and distress is minimized, or, or that that they have um, considered the the negative mm. uh, uh, implications of the of the of the project or whatever they are doing with the data, and we will sign it off or, or decline or ask them to accept the risk, which means that they should buy the necessary insurance that will give you your compensation when things go wrong. Thank you very much. And Patricia Duse Poku is Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, uh, helping us to understand what they do, particularly in how they protect our data, our interests. Their name is Data Protection Commission. Now, I'm going to run by you a few things that are relevant, very important from their, their law. It's not their law, it's for all of us. Yeah. These are the principles that are supposed to be applied in dealing with people's data. So he says, a person who processes data, that's a data controller, yes. shall take into account the privacy of the individual by applying the following principles. A accountability, B, lawfulness of processing, specification of purpose, compatibility of further processing with purpose of collection, quality of information, openness, data security safeguards, and data subject participation. This is almost what you have taken us through in this first phase. Yes. Accountability, mm -hmm. lawfulness of the processing, specification of the purpose mm -hmm. you say we can we are entitled to ask yes good um, okay then in processing personal data they are to ensure that the personal data is processed without infringing the privacy rights of the data subject mm -hmm. in a lawful manner and in a reasonable manner a data controller or processor shall, in respect of foreign data subjects, ensure that personal data is processed in compliance with data protection legislation of the foreign jurisdiction of that subject where personal data originating from that jurisdiction is sent to this country for processing. How do you ensure that they comply with Section 18? Making sure that when they are processing the data, they do not infringe our privacy, or rights of our data, they are acting in a lawful manner and they are acting in a reasonable manner. How do you ensure that that is done? So, I will, I will, in answering this question, I will look at one right that I didn't express and one duty that is key. One of the rights is the right from the processing using automated processing uh, uh, technology. In this era of AI, mm -hmm. there's a lot of aggregation of data and automatic processing of personal data from different, different databases. We have a right when we feel that the use of advanced technology such as AI is impacting us. Mm -hmm. That is a right. The, on the side of the data controller, they have a duty 
when they want to repurpose data. And I know these days the repurposes is, is usually through data analytics mm -hmm. and going for advanced technology, AI, cloud use. All these are yeah. not original purposes that we knew of when certain bits of our data was collected, especially in right. the large public sector mm -hmm. institutions who have had our data from since we were babies. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the data controllers have a duty to proactively publish or inform you. You mentioned earlier that we, have, we can ask. Mm -hmm. We don't expect the data subject to have that burden of asking. Mm. The onus is on the data controller to evidence to the commission on request how or what effort or what process they have used to inform you. So when they come on our radar, we don't ask their uh, customers or the public, did you ask? We mm -hmm. ask them mm -hmm. how they made, how they uh, uh, dealt with the right to be informed or how they, what effort they put in to inform you. So th this is how we, both the, the rights and the duties work together. We expect data controllers to proactively position themselves to address your rights. Good. And so that's, that's how we do it. Okay. So um, I'm going to come to, because we're dealing with that already, I'm going to come to the question as to how, what is required for a data controller to be defined as compliant mm -hmm. so that we all know the data controller we are dealing with, if they are not compliant, then we'll be careful, mm -hmm. then we'll be cautious. What is uh, required? If you have listened so far, she has given so much already about that. But Sections 19 and 20. 19 is about minimality. It says mm. personal data may only be processed if the purpose for which it is to be processed is necessary, relevant, and not excessive. What does that mean? So the principle of minimality, data minimization, is to make sure that even when you have, uh, you have uh, addressed your duty to uh, explain your legal basis, that or you have the consent of the individual, you have already received the full data, data set. We expect you to prove on request that you have used the minimum necessary to address the purpose. So if you collected our national ID, for example, just mm -hmm. using that because it's one of the biggest data true. sets yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. If you have that and you want to serve us, that you have used uh, the minimum attributes in that data set in order to serve us without going into all the detail that we gave you mm. because, because it's there. Okay. We call that uh, just in case collecting, collecting just in case you might need it. You only collect what you need to address the purpose for which you're. So we expect, for example, the, the data controller of that da database to give you access to only what you need mm -hmm. to be able to serve us, right. not the full data set. Mm. I'm reading again section 20 to you. She has addressed all of this for our benefit. A person shall not process personal data without the prior consent. Remember that one. It must be done with your consent. Without the prior consent of the data subject, unless the purpose for which the personal data is processed is necessary for the purpose of a contract to which the data subject is a party, authorized or required by law to protect the legitimate interest of the data subject necessary for the proper performance of a statutory duty, or necessary to pursue the legitimate interest of the data controller or a third party to whom the data is supplied. Unless otherwise provided by law, a data subject may object, remember she, she spoke to that, she, that already, may object to the processing of personal data. Where a data subject objects to the processing of personal data, the person who processes the personal data shall stop the processing of the personal data. Interesting. You are still here on the law. This is your legal light. It is your help law. And we are dealing with the subject matter of data protection, obligations, and sanctions. My guest is Patricia Edusepoku, who is the executive director of the Data Protection Commission. We will be right back where she will now tell us who is complying so that you and I are careful who we deal with. We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is the law. It's your legal light. It's your health law. And Patricia 
Edusei Poku, Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, is helping us to understand how exactly the, uh, our rights are, how they are making sure that our rights are being protected, uh, the obligations of controllers, and then, as you know, we are discussing obligations and sanctions. We will get to the sanctions very shortly. So we are now at the point where we are looking at um, what is required for a data controller to be defined as being compliant. But before that, I had read a portion of the law uh, that is in Section 20, where I spoke about uh, where data is being taken for purposes of uh, contract or legitimate um, interest. What does this mean particularly for, for employees, for example? So you, you get a job and you sign your job contract and, and but the sheer fact that you've signed your contract is telling your employee that they can collect and use your information in the HR department to have you as an employee. That doesn't override your rights as a data subject. In institutions, organizations that have employees also have a duty to their staff as a data controller. So some who come to us and say that we are not collecting any data, so we don't register. Your staff are your data subjects too, mm. and they have the full rights and support of the Data Protection Act. And we have staff who have come to us uh, to speak on their behalf because their employers have simply ignored their requests under the, when they've tried to assert themselves under the law. Mm. So this is a good opportunity to tell all employers who are data controllers as well that your employee database and the employees you have constitute as a data subjects to your organization, and you must give them the full obligation of the law uh, as you, you do. You cannot the misuse the data they give you. That's right. Okay, so there will be sanctions if you do so. We'll deal with them. So who is compliant when we are talking about a data controller? So a data controller will never in any points receive a letter or clearance from the commission to say you are compliant because there's never a hundred percent compliance. Compliance is a continuous improvement situation. Okay. When we talk about that as a matter, it's at a point in time, especially when there's been a breach or there's a complaint against your company or there's a problem with your technology, we will then look at your state of compliance at a point in time. So it's a rolling situation. If we use employees that I've just mentioned uh, as an example, today you've trained all your staff, they've all understood the, the, the use of your technology, then some leave, new staff come on board, they haven't yet been trained, so then you can't claim to be fully compliant in that uh, state anymore. So you're continuously doing the requirements of the act to ensure that you are able to explain uh, at a point in time, your, your state of accountability, your, your accountability to the public will be explaining your efforts towards complying at any point in time. This is why we say there's no So by, the, by this law, yeah. every data controller by section 46.3 is required to register with the Data Protection Commission. That's right. So that I will get the assurance that the person, the controller who is dealing with my data is under supervision yes. to make sure that my data is not abused. Yes. Beyond Section 46.3, there's mm -hmm. Section 97 that says that three weeks mm -hmm. after the law, became, the law came into force, if you already existed, you had, you had three months to be compliant. If you are newly registered with, the, say, the uh, Registrar General or you put yourself together as an association, you have three weeks to be compliant by registering. Uh, and the to, law to, to came into your... effect on the 18th of May 2020. That's right. Okay. So those who were in existence mm. at that time have, the, uh, have defaulted over three or four times. Many if they have not registered. If they never registered with mm. the commission, because you should have registered in that 2015 mm -hmm. and every two years renewed to date. Every two years, that's according to section 46. Uh, section 50. Section 50. You need to renew. Okay, yes. right. Okay, thank you very much about that. Um, 
I'm, I'm reading a section, that is section, is it 50? 50, 50 says that registration with the commission shall be renewed every two years. Yeah. And then I think sub 11 there says registration with the commission does not end there. Okay, you are required to appoint and train a data protection supervisor to monitor compliance uh, with the act. Okay, so the fact that you have registered is not enough. No. You are supposed to do certain to things. Implement, to commence the implementation of your internal privacy program. The privacy program means that, like I said in my previous statement, that it's a continuous improvement action. You, privacy management is not something you do once and forget about it. Mm -hmm. It's part of the business system. So you need to run it alongside your business as usual. What we do according to Section 58 is certify and qualify someone for you who will be responsible for implementing the program, who will have all the handholding they need from the commission and, and be guided by us to implement the requirements. That person will be our go-to person uh, to feedback information in terms, in terms of reporting the state of maturity, etc., or to tell us when the organization is failing. Uh, the ultimate decision maker of the, of the organization needs to appoint a senior responsible person for risk. That risk manager should work with our privacy supervisor, data protection supervisor, to ensure that the organization is continuously looking at how their business as usual uh, impacts the people mm -hmm. they serve, their mm -hmm. data subjects. And 56 actually says... If you fail to register, you are committing an offense that can lead you to be prosecuted. That's right. If you don't register. Yes. And you could be looking to a fine of about 3,000 Ghana CDs, or you could go to jail for uh, not more than uh, two years, yes. or to both the fine yes. and the imprisonment. Yes, many institutions in the country in the last month or so have already received our Section 56 letters. Oh, I see. Yes, right. So I was going to that, that question about, you know, the notice that you have served about enforcement to the public. What is warranting that? So we feel that uh, after two, three, uh, almost seven years now of educating the Ghanaian public and data controllers, hand-holding, uh, we've trained almost a thousand professionals for the ecosystem and placed them in the large public sector and some private uh, sector uh, institutions to implement the privacy program. Mm. We have uh, done a lot of public awareness and road shows. And now this year we are focusing on enforcing the law, meaning that we are going to do some spot checks and some uh, visits and audits to check that those who are doing the work are doing what they have registered with us to do. And those who have totally ignored the law and defaulted are also brought uh, on our radar uh, by, through prosecution and, and, and made to uh, comply with the requirements of this act. Mm. So, like we said, literally every business or entity is in data collection um, and will be a controller. But, of course, there are exceptions. Yeah. I think for people who do the, the work on this kind of platform for journalism, taking data for the purposes of journalism mm. is exempt, correct? So it's good that you raised the, the matter on exemption because if you saw our publication, we mm -hmm. did say that even exempt even exempt institutions need to register with the commission. Okay. What you'll be doing there is telling us that you exist. This is the kinds of data you collect. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of information that you use for journalism, since you use that as an example. Oh, right. mm -hmm. And then you agree the circumstances in which we will exempt you with us in advance. Because you know your business. You are the subject matter expert in journalism. You know the circumstances that causes you to look for data. You know what you use it for. You know why you collect it. So you file that with us and we agree with you that when these situations arise and you use the data in this manner, you are exempt mm. before you go ahead and do it. Right. So I was asking what warrants the notice you have served and what does that mean? What, you know, um, our data controllers to expect 
during this period. I'm sure there are those who are already aware. They don't like the memory of what happened the last in yes, the previous year. Yes. Yeah, so tell us so about that. So we gave this notice because we don't want like what happened last time that we just, uh, our intention is not to uh, reach hands or to just show up in your office to give you the opportunity to get online. It's an online process and register yourself. Okay. And, and, and to get as many of you on our uh, registration uh, register as possible. But what this uh, notice goes on to explain is that those institutions that uh, decide that they are exempt, they are not exempt from complying with the requirements of this notice. That's right. They also need to come and make themselves known. Otherwise, any Tom, Dick and Harry can decide they are exempt and then start applying the law, collecting data and think that they are exempt. You need to get us to agree with you. When the commission agrees with you that you fall within this sector, you fall within the category that can be exempt, yes, we agree that the data you collect is for, for example, journalism. And so, yes, you can be exempt when you're doing journalism. But what about your staff? What about the staff that is employed in a media house? Don't they have rights? So far as the staff and your HR business is concerned, their, their rights still exist and your duties still exist. But when they are doing journalism, we can agree that in those circumstances... So it's, it's a period you have opened. Yes. Uh, what is the timeline? What are the expectations from who? And what is likely to happen to defaulters? We believe that the trigger time is the most important time to notice, notify you, which we have done from 14th August onwards until when we feel that uh, uh, we have done enough of that, that people are uh, proactively registering and that uh, sensitization has been effective, then we can uh, 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 come, come back to normal uh, working with data controllers. But until then, we will we'll be doing these spot checks and we will actually scale up the work to the, the rest of the nation, not just in Accra, we are working nationwide mm. uh, to do these port checks. And what do you uh, normally do to defaulting uh, entities? So currently, in, in, in this act, we have to prosecute before we can apply sanctions. So okay. whilst we are using the, current, the act in its current state, we will prosecute and then the court will apply the sanctions. Very soon, as we're working with this, we're also working on amending the act so that we are aligned with what is happening on the international landscape where the data protection commissions are empowered to sanction directly administrative and fines administrative fines and, and, and ask you to pay. And in, in the global uh, landscape, the standard is 2 to 4% of your gross annual turnover worldwide. Mm. So, so we are able to take up to 4% of your annual worldwide turnover, which for some institutions, quite a sum mm -hmm. of money, mm -hmm. which is what we'll be looking for Ghana to also apply. Many of my peer regulators are, are across the African region. I happen to be the president of the commissioners in the African region. Oh, I see. And I'm leading this effort. I know many of the West African countries and other regional are going to amend to ensure that in the African region, we are applying the internationally accepted 2 to 4% mm. sanction. Right. Directly from the commission. So this registration, you, you spoke about uh, initially having had, is it 1,200 you know, uh, persons, uh, mm -hmm. data controllers on your register? Is that the number you still have? No, um, the, it's grown uh, significantly, but it's still not uh, enough. In terms of percentages, we are less than 10% of the active mm -hmm active tax paying institution, when we talk about actual established institutions that pay taxes to GRA, we are less than 10% of that number. Okay. So it's still Maybe very low. Because you are not cracking the whip. So here we go. We are trying to crack the whip now. And we will, we will set examples with some of these large and institutions. how are you making it easier for them to register? Our system has been easy from the beginning. It's a web-based application. You don't have to come to our office. You go online www.dataprotection.org.gh and click register, fill the form, and our officers pick up uh, the details, uh, review it, give you, uh, contact you, and then before you know, you're picking up your license. How much does it cost? It depends on the size of your organization and the form that you complete automatically weights your, your, your application and mm. to categorize you as a large institution, medium or small institution. Large institutions pay 1800 for two years. 
medium-sized institutions are paying 900 for two years small institutions are paying 120 for two years and this is the parliamentary cleared fees and right. charges okay. for the commission so we should be doing this shouldn't we yes. and we the data subjects when we feel that somebody is breaching our data violating our personal data how can we reach you what do we do use all possible channels our social media handles are open info at by email to data protection commission we have many hotlines published on our website and in the public notice that's gone in the newspapers you can walk in and do a face-to-face -face personal uh, uh, complaint you can write to us the data protection commission we are on Popol street uh, is legal or by our post postal address which is also visible on our website mm. and, and and just share the information with us and we'll take action Straight away. Thank you very much. Uh, Patricia Eduse Puku is the Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission. She's been helping us understand our rights as data subjects and obligations as well, particularly also of the data controllers and the sanctions that apply when they uh, do breach them. So, uh, your very last word in a minute, then we are done for today. Thank you very much for coming. My absolute pleasure and duty. Yes. I, I thought you were going to look in the camera and say, comply or we'll deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to wish my corporate affairs uh, manager, Anna Maria uh, Bismarck, uh, a very happy birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Anna Maria. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. And...